cool. You've got your um, other quadrilateral or your other shape over here. It's a quadrilateral. Um, if you came in a little bit later, this is absolutely any quadrilateral, um, as weird and unusual as possible. Now, I want you to do exactly the same thing. Get your ruler out, and I want you to mark out all of the midpoints. Mark out all of the midpoints. Um, go ahead, measure them. In fact, I'm going to have to do this for some of my longer sides because I can't do it by eye. Measure out, find all the midpoints, and then join them all up, and then see what happens. And also, try and have one that dis is different to the person next to you um, so that you can see this pattern. It's really quite beautiful. Okay. Have you noticed what you made? Did you notice what you made? I'm almost there. Well. Here, yeah, what is going on? Okay, did you make the shape? Did you make the shape? Let's give this shape a name. I'm going to call it P Q R S. What shape is P Q R S? It's uh, depending on the kind of quadrilateral you drew, um, you'll get a slightly different PQRS, but all of you, every single one, no matter what A, B, C, D you began with, your PQRS will be a parallelogram, okay? Which is kind of weird and crazy. Uh, in fact, you can make really ridiculous looking quadrilaterals, right? Um, we're, we're so used to thinking of polygons as convex. Um, everything faces outwards, right? But you can have weirdo guys like this. Watch what happens. I'm even going to do it quite roughly because you can see what's going on. Midpoint, 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 midpoint. Does that look okay? Did I do it by eye all right? And then watch that. One, two, three, four. It's kind of creepy. How does it do that? What's going on? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple minutes to think. My tip for you is to do this nice and easily. Um, there's lots of ways to do it. That's one of the great things about geometry. It requires a lot of creativity and imagination because there's m always multiple ways to prove something. My big tip for you is the, re the um, result we just proved over here will help you a lot. It's one of the quickest and most efficient ways to show that indeed PQRS has to be a parallelogram. So I'm going to let this settle in your mind and think about how you might be able to find this over here because it's hiding in there if you can find it. I'll give you a few minutes to have a play. Off you go. I did say before, I did say before that one of the things that is um, both most wonderful but also most challenging about geometry, real geometry, is it requires so much creativity. You, like you have to imagine things that aren't there and you have to think of, you've got to come up with ways of looking at something which um, you've never done before. Uh, we've talked about this before. They're problems rather than exercises, almost always. So I'm going to provide a construction in here. My tip is, remember over here we've got a triangle that is formed from joining midpoints over here. Okay? Now we've clearly joined a lot of midpoints in this diagram, so we should expect that there's a um, continuity between them. But the triangles that I've got at the moment, like for example, there's a triangle up here, triangle over here, here, and here. Those triangles don't look like the triangle that we drew over there. You see how this triangle's kind of been like sliced down the middle, right? These triangles aren't sliced down the middle. Um, there's, no, there's no middle in here or over here. So where is the triangle that's being sliced? Hmm. So this is where the construction has come in. Now just before I do this, you'll know I'm using a different color. Um, and I also have a comically large diagram. You will find creativity is helped when you have a big canvas to work on. If you have to work on this tiny little postage stamp, it's very difficult to draw stuff on it or see what's going on. Colors also help because they can distinguish different features. I'm going to join up the diagonals of our original quadrilateral. Can you see them there? Look at your original shape, the original four-sided figure that you drew. 
I want you to look at the diagonals there. Get your ruler out and join them up with another color if you can. I'm going to join them up like this. <clears throat> okay, so here are my di diagonals. And what I want you to notice, I'm going to do this with more colors, is that if you have a look, say, at the top half up here, or maybe in the top quarter, okay? Uh, triangle A, B, D. Do you notice it's just like the triangle we were working with? It's been sliced in half, okay? And it's got these, um, whoops, wrong color. It's got these equal sides, uh, here and here, here and here. Are you okay with that? So therefore, it should fit the pattern we noticed before of creating these parallel lines, because the interval joining those midpoints is parallel to the other side, the one you haven't used. So therefore, I can say this side is parallel to this side, or intervals, I should say. Does that make sense? Like it's, I'm not going to re rehearse that proof because we just proved it. So I can, I can look at that and I can see it. right? But now, just pretend that this part of the diagram doesn't exist. Look at this bottom part over here. Do you notice it's exactly the same setup but upside down? Do, do you see it? Uh, triangle, what's it called? BCD, BCD, this big one, is the same, oh look, my triangle's been cut into two because of, um, by the way, this is going to be useful for you particularly in the last um, thing I'm going to show you today. You start running out of like markings for sides because you're like, I've got too many things that are equal. So once you get to three, I stop putting dashes and I start labeling, you know how um, Roman numerals, uh, they use like letters, right? So these actually look a lot like Roman numerals, one and two and three. So I mark these sides as four, like that. It, whatever convention you like, put stars or crosses or whatever, just so long as you can tell them apart. Okay? So therefore you can see that not only is this side parallel to this interval, but in this lower triangle here, this side is parallel to this interval. See it? Um, for the same reason, but in a different triangle. So now, if you forget about this guy, then you've got those opposite sides of PQRS being parallel. And it doesn't take too much thought to realize you can rehearse this argument, but at an angle. You can say this guy is parallel to this one, same reason. This guy's, sorry, I need more arrows. This guy's parallel to this one, for the same reason, in that triangle. So now when I get rid of this construction in the middle, with my really messy finger, you can see, ta-da, I don't need to say anything else. That's the definition of a parallelogram, okay? And you can even do it over here with this weird shape.